Dunner, 23.13. Bye. From the Iowa Speedway, and it's another edition of the National Salmon Racing League Cup Series. Tonight we come to you live from the cornfield of Iowa Speedway. It's the Christmas Classic 250 on this fine December 22nd. We come on the air and say good evening fans and Merry Christmas. Marty Sakala with you. So glad you could join us for live coverage of the National Salmon Racing League. Well, we're getting set to go here, qualifying underway at the moment. A couple of drivers have already taken some time. With just a couple of moments left to go, just under five minutes left to go. Let's get you set here for the Iowa Speedway and skip the stage set for the National Sim Racing League Cup Series. First off, if you missed us last week, we had a good one for you at the Pocono Raceway, a crazy one. My goodness, a lot of wrecks, and somehow Ashton Crowder recovered from a wreck to win his sixth race of the season in six starts with the National Sim Racing League. This is how your top ten looked. Ashton Crowder, Josh Soucy, Dylan Clark, Mark Zucosi, Tyler Rush, Kayla McCarthy, Brian Wiggins, Alan Crowell, Tom Para, and Brian Preslar was the top ten. Mark Zucosi goes to the top of the charts with a 23.04. Take a look at how our point standings look coming on in. We've got eight different winners on the season. Ashton Crowder gained his sixth win, puts him at the top of the playoff standings. Here's how the cutoff looks currently at the moment. Via points, Josh Aaron has 490 points in ninth. Briggs Swope is 10th with 454. Justin Dilt is 11th with 447. Alan Crowell is 12th with 440 points. 
Excuse me, Jimmy Barr is 13th in points with 423. Justin Cope is 14th with 383 points. 15th, Dylan Clark with 344. As Landon Lacey goes up to second quick at a 23.08. Brian Presler has the final playoff spot currently with 326 points. First four drivers below the cutoff is Tom Para with 311 points, so 15 points below the cutoff. 18th is John Crow. He's got 298. 19th is Jeremy Edwards with 295, and in 20th is Brennan Poole with 292 points. Still waiting for a couple more drivers to come on out for qualifying. There is an inactivity role in iRacing now these days. So we will keep you posted as per that. Let's uh, give you our analysis for tonight's race. You see it on the bottom right corner of your screen. 250 laps, 218.75 miles. Stages are set at lap 75, one, at lap 75, 150, and 250. Let's get that updated for you here. I just had some technical difficulties for just a moment. It's around the 7 eighths mile short track. 14 degrees in turns 1 and 2, 12 degrees in turns 3 and 4. All drivers get 6 tire sets. This is a peak key you want to watch out for closely here with how good this track is at the Iowa Speedway. Drivers can use the high side, they can use the low side, they can use the middle. High side can definitely get the advantage in the exits of the corners. Kayla McCarthy takes to the track in the number 24 machine. Has one win this season coming from the Auto Club Speedway. Under 90 seconds to go in qualifying. We'll watch McCarthy's lap. Josh Susi also out there on the racetrack. We'll get to him in just a moment. Kayla 316 starts the times off on lap number one. Fifth quick at a 23.2. So a good first lap for Kayla McCarthy. We'll see what happens off of turn four on her second lap. Josh Susi also working on his first lap currently at the moment. We'll get you that in just a moment. McCarthy, see if this is a faster lap or not. And it is just by about a hundredth of a second, 23.19. So stays fifth quick as Josh Susi is currently sixth quick. The number 12 working on lap number two has a 23.20. And this is a faster lap for Josh Susi. possibly will depend on sector two. It is lower just at the last second at a 23.21. So that does it for qualifying and on the pole tonight for the 23.04 is Mark Sikosi in the number 91. Set to do battle here at Rusty Wallace's special place, America's place to race at Iowa Speedway. Here we go, fans. First off, it's your starting lineup. On the front row is Mark Sikosi in the number 91 and Landon Lacey in the 53. In row number two, Robbie Weiss and Brian Wiggins. In the third row, Kayla McCarthy and Josh Tutu, the teammates. In row number four, Tyler Rush and Daniel Menzies. Rounding out the top ten, that is Brian Broderick in the line. In row number six is Tyler Heisley and David Steele Jr. Give you the rest of the starting lineup for tonight. It's Jimmy Barr, then Greg Swolk in row seven. Ryan Preslar and Dylan Clark, row eight. David Salter and Josh Aaron, row nine. Alan Crell and Justin Dilt in row number 10. Alex Robinson and Paul Serrano in row 11. And rounding out the field of 23 tonight, that is Tom Hera. Field just about set under 50 seconds to go until we get the drivers rolled off the track. Two pace laps around the Iowa Speedway. Let's show you our weather forecast for tonight. 
It is 70, excuse me, 69 degrees, both on the air and on the track. Should provide some decent quality racing. Humidity is set at 79% for 11 p.m. in iRacing time. So it should be a fun one. 250 laps. Let's know, by the way, folks, where you were watching from and who you were rooting for. The Aiden Bearline Fan Club has definitely returned. The Fast Racer and Racer Girl are back on in. Stay behind the pace car. Our race director tonight in air traffic control. How about a round of applause for him? Get it up for the driver, for a driver of the number nothing. That is Chris Lynn. Give it, give it up for Chris Lynn, everyone. Going green in about one and a quarter laps. Mark Stokolsi starting on pole. Brand new number, brand new scheme as put on the affordable SEO colors for this weekend. One lap to go until we get the green flag. We hope you're having a fantastic holiday week so far. Of course, Christmas is coming up on Saturday, and if you celebrate Hanukkah, we hope you had an awesome Hanukkah. We've also got New Year's Day coming up next week. Planning on closing 2021 out with a bang. After Iowa next week is Road America to conclude 2021. That takes us into the new year. They make their way down the back straightaway into turn number three and four. And as we say, race fans, it's time to strap in and hold on tight because these men and women are about to turn them loose and drop the sledgehammer. Okay, Pace car makes the left hand turn into pit road. Zacosi and Lacey go, the go, front go. row. It is showtime at Iowa Speedway. Stage one, 75 laps off of quarter number two. It's Landon Lacey with the advantage on Mark Sikosi, Brian Wiggins, Robbie Bice, and Josh Susie. That's your current top five at the moment. Susie looking up on the outside of Kayla McCarthy to take away P5. One driver is off the track. That's Tyler Rush in the number 27. Into the grass he goes. No caution flag is needed. We stay green. Got to be very careful on the exits of the corners. Too much throttle can get your rear end to come out from underneath you and can turn your car sideways on around. Lacey puts two laps in the books. We see it once again. Brian Wiggins goes off track. A lot of drivers are needed for lawn care tonight, and Wiggins goes back and back into just around the eighth, ninth position. Battle on the line with Briggs Swope in car number seven. Swope with the holiday festive scheme. Currently in the ninth position, battling with Dylan Clark for that spot. Clark looking on the inside. Those first two laps, we saw cars sideways. That absolutely has to do with, you know, the tires are cold, pressures are starting to get up to top. So that is the situation drivers are dealing with. Let's watch Briggs Swope here off the corner, see if he can get the high side to work. Dylan Clark clears him, that opens up the door for Ryan Broderick in the number five. Fastest lap for the line, 23.32. Broderick makes the pass on the inside, you just heard it. Fastest lap of the race goes to bear line with a 23.32, is for the lead, Mark Sikosi. Looking up on the outside, challenging with Landon Lacey. It's Sikosi at the star, excuse me, it's Lacey at the star finish line, but Sikosi still dialing in the field. Stage one set at 75 laps. We're hearing Bearline improve the fastest lap at a 23.28. Right on board here with Robbie Bites on the number 28 machine. Good car early, as you see Sikosi has taken the race lead away.
goes to your pole sitter, off to a good start, entering a groove higher compared to Landon Lacey. And continues to lead it. Lacey second, Bice is third, and Susie and McCarthy round out the top five. Let's go to a good battle on track here. This is for 14th. That's uh, Jimmy Barr up on the outside of David Salter. Salter iRacing number set as number 88, officially the number 20 scheme. Makes the pass work. Oh, we got trouble in four. That was Dylan Clark in the 34 who just got extremely mm. sideways. Makes a spectacular save, falls all the way back into the 15th position. So he goes on and back. Let's watch another battle happening, and that is Brian Wiggins and Daniel Menzies. Let's go back and uh, show you, as well as some of these off tracks. Let's first watch if we can. Stand by as we cue this on up. We'll start off first here with Tyler Rush and show you what happened to him. Car gets loose off a of turn four. Luckily, how the front end looks, how high it is up, it's not digging into the grass. And here's Brian Wiggins in the number one. Got a little bit of air time there, actually. So a pretty good save. And then finally, we saw Dylan Clark. There may have been contact from Broderick. I'm not too sure. I believe it was those two that exchanged some blows early on in the season. So Wiggins has the sixth position up on Daniel Menzies. Back over here, let's go to a battle for the 10th spot. Final points here in stage number one. David Spiel Jr. on David Salter. Stage one set at 75 laps in this race today. Salter just about a car length behind. Let's ride on board with the number 20 as he looks to try and make a pass on Spiel. Makes the pass stick, takes away the 10th position. Let's go behind them here and take a look and you see Dylan Clark, Brian Preslow going at it for 14th ever since Clark got into it with uh, Broderick. He has just not been able to find the momentum but again, very early in this race. Frank Swope starting to lose a little bit of time, could go three wide off the corner, let's see. Swope keeps it going up on the top shelf. No one yet's been able to get some momentum on the exit of the corner with the exception of one driver. That's your race leader, Mark Sikosi. That's how he made the pass on Landon Lacey. Swope loses two spots because of that, because of going up on the outer groove and could lose another, opening up the door for Aiden Bearline in the number 13 machine. You may recognize that name, by the way, Aiden Bearline, an iRacing World of Outlaws driver. So making his professional rounds in the dirt circuits. Got a change for the third position. Here is a pass for Josh Susi inside on Robbie Bice. Susi five wins this season, currently leads the regular season point standings. Easy pass for Josh Susi takes away third position. He is hungry after what he went through last week at Pocono. Getting really loose in turn number one. Rebound to finish in the second position, but has had a great season so far. Like I said, five wins, but when Ashton Crowder has raced, he's taking the checkered flag. Six wins, six wins and six starts for Crowder. Not in the race today. But Susie makes his way up into third position. McCarthy now trying on Robbie Bice for P4. McCarthy a win this season, coming at Auto Club in a three wide photo finish. Bice tags the wall off of four. Could cost him another spot here. Brian Wiggins looking on the inside, along with Daniel Menzies. That should be an easy pass for Wiggins, and it is. Big rule change, by the way, coming out of the National Sim Racing League recently this week, if you did not hear the news. No quick repairs for the drivers anymore 
and that is just great to see. Drivers now really have to consider the way they race each other, which means if you pretty much get involved in a wreck, you are out of this race. It absolutely as a result of the Pocono racing as we had two big ones in that race. A lot of that definitely led to that change. The fans absolutely agreed on that. Trouble for Alex Robinson in the number 23. Issue on his car, he's gone a lap down. I believe uh, his car just got really loose. Let's take a look at the replay and see here. Out of the corner, was just letting drivers go. I think he's just letting drivers go by. Not sure if he had an issue bother him earlier, but Robinson way off the pace in the number nine machine slash 23. Another driver's off the pace. That's Menzies at the number nine. I think drivers are taking it a little bit easier on the tires early here in this race. Listening to Robbie Bice. Robinson up in the wall. He's got some right side paint damage. That'll be some optional repair work for him when he comes into pit road. And Robinson's start in the, in the Christmas Classic 250 has gone from bad to worse. And again, scrapes that. He's looking at a situation where if he scrapes it enough, that car could go spin out from underneath him. Tyler Rush trying to rebound from his off in out of turn number four, has rebounded from last up to 18th position. Let's go back and watch the Menzies Bice battle here. This is a battle for eighth position. Got David Smeal Jr. up in this battle too. Same with David Salter. A couple of top 10 spots on the line. Menzies has definitely shown improvement since his first start in the National Sim Racing League. As he starts to fade back just a little bit. So Menzies all the way back to 11th. We go and look up with two spots ahead. Smeal Jr. looking inside on Bice. The low line appearing to work for everyone early here. It's the high side going lately. He missed this as well, but Landon Lacey has taken the lead back from Mark Sikosi. We apologize we missed that pass happening on the track. Let's go to a replay and show you how that happened. It's not the pass, that was earlier on in the race. This is the pass we were talking about here. Lacey making the run all the way down to the inside. And the charge racing, number 53 machine, an easy pass as he takes the lead away. Mark Sikosi lets him go. Nine tenths of a second lead for Landon Lacey. His first start with the National Sim Racing League, racing out of the Charge Racing slash KTS Motorsports Camp. Let's go behind them and watch a battle for 10th position. A big pack of drivers here. We talked about Bice, Bar, Menzies, Clark, Swope, and Barreline trying to get into this battle in turn number one. Look at the run for Swope up on the outside. He's been liking that. Menzies' car just fading back early. He may have used too much of his tires. And he's pretty much just letting the field go by. Not sure what the issue is with Menzies in the Speed Demon Seth machine early on, but he is off the pace compared to other drivers. We'll check and see if he comes in before lap number 75. We do have one driver in the pits, and that is Robinson, who's come to a halt in the number 23. Overshot his box. We'll see if this brings the caution out. But that, that's a very dangerous scene. Him going in reverse. Got a full call and there's caution. the caution. Caution is out for Alex Robinson in the number 23. And honestly, no offense to Robinson at all. But that's just a boneheaded caution move by him. Got another driver in the pits, and that is Brian Wiggins. Oh, never mind. He makes... Does not bring it on in. We're under caution. It's closed. 
Let's show you the situation with Robinson. Oh, he's, he had a ton of damage before that. Comes on in, locks him up, misses the box, and at this point here, you should just keep on going. You should just keep going, wait another lap, but instead he doesn't. Instead he backs it up, not safe for race control, and as a result, he's got to come up bring instead, as a result, caution flag's got to come out. You know what? We may have had something else happen here. The lead is pitting now. Let's take a look if something did happen. Bear line. Oh, we did have something happen. Bear line, a nice 360 save. And that's some front end damage early. First caution of the race is out just past lap 32. Landon Lacey makes his way on in. At the same time, though, still, if you're Alex Robinson, not a safe move. And early damage on there for. Aiden Bearline. So Bearline is our race leader. We'll step aside for our first break of the evening. And when we come back, we'll have the restart at Iowa in the Christmas Classic 250. Gamer 2, what you see and what you hear is what you feel. Butt Kicker, the future is feeling. Under our first caution of the evening for a spin involving Aiden Barrelon, we should be getting one lap to green flag this time by. Going to complete 35 laps this time, still in stage number one. Our first stage ends at lap number 75. Okay, Marty, get ready. Race will resume at the end of this lap. And we do have one lap until we get the green flag, so let's reset the field here for you as we get ready for the restart. Landon Lacey is the race leader. He selects the inside line. Mark Sikosi lines up next to him. That's row number one. Row two is Josh Susi and Kayla McCarthy. Row three is Tyler Isley and Brian Wiggins. Row four, that's Ryan Broderick and David Smeal Jr. Rounding out the top ten is Jimmy Barr and Daniel Menzies. So Lacey, the control car, as we get ready to go back to the green flag, will have the right to fire first on this restart. Makes the pace car makes a left-hand turn into pit road. There goes green, Lacey. Green, green. Let's go. We're back to racing.
Good restart as Sikosi comes down with second position. And then Susie McCarthy, Wiggins for a side-by-side -side battle is Broderick and Smeal Jr. And Broderick gets the pass to stick for seventh spot on the 29. So Lacey leads, McCarthy is loose, a contact with Wiggins, and around goes the number one. Everyone scatters on through. Jimmy Barr is also involved, yellow flag. We think that Wiggins and Barr have gone off. This all started when Kayla McCarthy in the number 24, she got loose in the corner, coming across the start finish line. She's got left side damage as well. Jimmy Barr also with a piece of it. Race car is out, pits are closed. Let's give you another angle of what happened in that situation. Watch McCarthy, who had just a slight bobble, comes down into Wiggins. Goes around, now we should have stayed green. That would not have been a caution flag to come out. But then let's go to let's go to Jimmy Barr in the number 81. He gets loose off of turn number four, wheels it a little bit to the right, just too much. Comes onto the track, and that's enough to bring the yellow flag out. Let's watch a couple of onboards here. We'll watch Kayla McCarthy first. We can tell you, by the way, she is in the pits getting her car repaired. All right, we came in late on that. Wiggins in the number five. Excuse me, the number one. There's that bobble. Wiggins tried to avoid it, but it was just a slight too late. Jimmy Barr. Lucky dog coming by. Yes, speaking of lucky dog, free pass does go to what we're hearing is Paul Sperado in the number 57. Nice save for Jimmy Barr. Not to touch anyone else. So second caution of this race is out. You're seeing McCarthy in the pit road getting some optional damage repaired. And that will put her about a couple of laps down. She makes her way back on out. That puts it back to just around 21st position. One driver waiting to come out. That's David Salter. He's on out. Paul Smirato in the number 57 is the lucky dog. So he'll get back on the lead lap and is at the tail end. We'll stay, at, we'll keep you right here and while we're at it, we'll listen to some radio chatter when we get it. Two laps to green flag. You should get the one to go this time. We're going green next time by.
So one lap to the green flag. Let's reset the field here for you as we get set ready for this restart. Landon Lacey selects the inside once again. Mark Sikosi next to him. That's row number one. Row two is Josh Susie and Tyler Isley. Row number three, Ryan Broderick and David Smeal Jr. The fourth row gives us Daniel Menzies and Alan Crowell. And rounding out the top ten is Brian Preslar and Josh Aaron. Field again makes their way through turns number three and four. Sakosi on the outside of Lacey trying to time this restart. Oh man, right, Lacey, what a restart. Caught Sakosi sleeping big time. And that gives Josh Susi the second position. Two grooves higher, Sakosi doesn't like that. And here comes Susi to the inside. Almost had a chance to get the race lead. Now clears Sakosi for second spot. Remember, S S S Susie is an angry man. Sakosi had a beautiful slipstream off of Lacey to the inside for the race lead. And that's a perfect pass, folks. 30 laps to go in stage number one. This time by four cars battling for the race lead. How about Ryan Broderick in the number five machine? He's up there in this battle. Susie falls all the way back to fourth, stuck up on the outside. Tyler Isley running in the top five. Broderick trying to get a nice slipstream off of Landon Lacey to try and get a run for second position, but Sikosi currently pulling out away. Half second lead on the number 53. Broderick up to the quarter piano, tries to get the nose inside for the second yeah, we'll spot. Go, we'll oh, go, caution, caution is out. And we've got Brian Wiggins and Tyler Rush. Oh no, Alex Robinson slams into Rush with Arca breaks. What in is he thinking? Yeah, it's time to go, Alex. If I'm Robinson, I would just park that thing. We're Rush is torn up. Brian Wiggins with a damaged left side. Our third yellow of the evening. And we'll take a look and see what happened. This was a battle just around the top 10, just outside the top 10. Wiggins tried to look to the inside. Bobble got up there with Rush. I think Briggs Swope got a piece of it too. Then wait for it, wait for it. Rush comes down. Oh, that's Rush. Holding the brakes and didn't even see Robinson. Let's get you another angle on that. Do we have a farther shot? I think this will give us something. That's just a zoomed out view. Well, the only thing we're gonna know is by watching Robinson's onboard. Caution flag's already out. Committed to the middle line. Oh man, that's all rush. That is all rush. That we did not see. Rush came on down, did not use his break, and I don't think he expected Robinson to come crashing in. And at the same time, Robinson, with the Arca brakes, flies on in. So that is a tough break. So we get a couple of more drivers in. Wiggins is in. Brick Swope, there you see Swope with some front end damage to his number seven DraftKings machine. Smirado also in pit road, and this is the guy that I think had the most damage of all of them. Tyler Rush in the 27, I think his night is ending early. Robinson is also out of the race in the 27 machine. Remember, no quick repairs for the drivers, so they are done.
so just waiting to get back going here. And again, we'll just keep you with you. While we're at it, to our 16 viewers, join us in the chat. Let us know who you're rooting for. We got a couple of more here. Joseph Thomas rooting for Brian Preslar. Uh, Danny Menzies is rooting for Daniel, just saying, hang in there. You got a long way to go. Yep. Preslar running in the eighth position. Menzies is in seventh. Twitch, meanwhile, currently quiet at the moment. Out racing girl 13. We missed this match. It said darn for Aiden Bearline. Bearline's had a nice improvement. It's made his way up to 10th position, even with the slight front end damage. So just under 25 laps to go in the stage when we get back going. Okay, Marty, get ready. Race and resume at the end of this lap. So one lap to go until we get the green flag. Lynn, yep, I know he's watching. Chris Lynn rooting for Alex Robinson. <laughs> Always likes, likes to have a little bit of fun with us. Ready to go back to the green flag. Mark Sakosi and Landon Lacey are our front row. Ryan Broderick and Josh Susi in row number two. Row three gives us Tyler Isley and David Smeal Jr. The fourth row, Alan Crowell and da Daniel Menzies rounding out the top ten is Brian Preslar and Aiden Verline. So Sakosi for the first time today is our control car as we get set to go back to the green flag. 23 to go green in flag. stage number one. Old serve on Lacey. Here comes Broderick down to the inside. Highest position I believe he's ever been in the National Sim Racing League. Broderick is up to second. Susie in fourth, here comes Tyler Isley inside on Smeal for B5. Bobbled up half a groove there just a moment. As Sakosi leads, but he's got company. Broderick to the inside looking for the race lead. One time lead. And here comes Lacey. Thought about going up the middle, going three wide, but nothing. We got a couple of cars off the pace, and that is why. Junk off of turn two. Ryan Preslar and Jimmy Barr. Oh boy, this is getting worse. Pace car is out, pits are closed. Both of them with heavy front end damage. Checking to see who else was involved. I'm looking to see if Ben sees. There's a, I think there's a tiny bit of rear end damage. That sucks, man. Uh, you'll bounce back, man. Keep it up, good race. And let's take a look. This may have started when Menzies Sorry, got Jeff, turned, I didn't mean potentially. To check up like that. I saw him spinning in front of us. Let's see here. Oh, man. Menzies was loose down into Preslar, up into Barr. Sends them all spinning. Give credit to Menzies. He did a good job from keeping that outside the, out of the inside wall. But some of the drivers here, man, nowhere to go. Got on the brakes right in time, and Preslar, all four wheels off of the ground. See, Menzies there just got loose in the center. He's about to drive away fine, and there's Far that comes down. And there's the shot. And that may have been Bearline that may have gotten into Menzies. Comes up, comes down. Heavy front end damage. Cautions are breeding cautions early here. That is our fourth yellow of the evening, and that's the fourth yellow alone in stage number one. It's been normal this season for short track races in the NSRO Cup Series. No. 
here in Manzies. As I was saying, it's been normal in the National Sim Racing League for um, short track races to have many caution flags. And you watch Menzies here. I think they've taken the rear end off. Nope, it's still on. Just a little bit of damage to his machine. Menzies was running inside the top 10 at the moment of the yellow. So Sikosi continues to lead. There should be two laps to the green flag. A Money 1513 says, have I ever said how much I hate racing? <laughs> um, you have not, because according to my ends, you are a first time chat from a viewer. So there you go. <laughs> Again, waiting to go back under the green flag. Should be one to green this time. So ready to get back under the green flag. Reset the field here for you. Mark Sikosi, Ryan Broderick make up the front row. Landon Lacey, Josh Susie in row number two. Row three, David Smeal Jr. and Tyler Isley. The fourth row gives us Alan Crow and Aiden Barreline rounding out the top ten. Dylan Clark and Robbie Bice. We can tell you from this, by the way, Preslar with a long stop, so it'll be a while before we see him come back out onto the track. Bar Wiggins and Swope are still on track. They are currently, though, a lap down. 16 to go in stage number one as we come back to the green flag. Green, 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 let's go. Broderick is caught sleeping. That puts Lacey up in the second spot, able to switch lanes, comes on down. He has P2. Spear Jr. wants the fourth position from Josh Susi. Not going to get it just yet. Meanwhile, Heisley just a groove above, trying to run it like it's a dirt track. Can he get the pass to stick? No, he's still behind the spoiler. Up front for the lead. Here comes Lacey inside on Sikosi. Gets the pass to slick a, to stick a slide job. Oh, there they go. Susie goes around. Of course, be careful. And along with Smeal Jr. Fifth yellow. Are you freaking kidding me? And the points leader in trouble early. We're under caution. Pits are closed. We're going to be hearing that a lot tonight, folks. Susie staying out in the number 12. And this will be a long night. We started this race at around 8.53 p.m. Eastern Time. It's going to be 8.54 p.m. Eastern Time. And stage one has nearly lasted a full hour. Here's what happened. Ah, Susie got loose, came up right down in the speed. Oh, my goodness. That is a heavy, heavy shot for Smeal Jr. That reminds me a lot of Jeff Fuller's club crash at Kentucky in 2006. Man, that was violent. Let's watch another angle of the Susie spin. 
that bobble off the corner. Man, oh. That's a heavy shot. It's Jim Smeal, hang on folks. Yikes. Now let's watch from Susie. This is from the rear rack. Should be two laps until the green flag. Another driver's in the pits, and that is Barr. So a long stop for Smeo Jr., and his race is likely done. We have wiped out nearly half of the field within a stage. A Money says I broadcast for a reason. I'll finish about 150 laps down. <laughs> Racing isn't easy, Alex. I know I tried it too. It didn't call me granny behind the wheel. <laughs> That's pretty funny. So this is two laps to the green flag. Josh Susie again in the pits, and he's doing this just to avoid going a lap down, just going back and forth and back and forth. Man, this race has not looked good. Apologies for what we are giving you tonight, but it's just not been good. We're hoping air traffic control can uh, tell the drivers that this race has nearly lasted an hour and is still in stage one because the crashing is just not good at all. It is definitely not. So Ke I was, uh, I'm wondering if he can relay something out. I'm talking with yeah. Chris right now. Okay, yep. thanks. It should be one lap to the green flag. Lights are off. All right, Marty, get ready. Race will resume at the end of this lap. So Landon Lacey credited as the leader and this time he goes to the outside for this restart. Mark Sikosi next to him in row one. Row number two, it's Ryan Broderick and Tyler Isley. Row three, that is Dylan Clark and Aiden Bearline. Row number four is Robbie Bice and Alan Crowell rounding out the top ten. Caleb McCarthy, and I cannot believe I'm saying this, but Tom Para in stage one, without a pit stop, is in 10th position. He does have a pit stop, but I'm talking without staying out and trying to lead a lap or so. You know what I mean. But here we go to get back to green flag. Nine laps to go in stage green number flag. one. Sikosi lets back, gives Lacey the room, opens up the door for Isley to get second position away. Broderick says, let's go or else I'm bumping you. Broderick says, you know what, I'm sending it inside, three wide. Sikosi makes contact with Bearline. That got very tight. So give the lead to Landon Lacey. Tyler Isley, the highest he's been today in second spot. The battle for fourth is on. Sikosi versus Bearline versus Clark. Contact behind them, nearly up in the wall. That was Salter. Let's go back to that battle for fourth position. Three wide behind them, though. It's, I think that's Salter stuck in the middle. No, excuse me, that was Bice stuck in the middle. 
Final driver in bonus points currently is Tom is Robbie Bice battling Tom Perra for 10th position. We'll update you on that in just a moment. Let's go behind them for fourth spot as Sakosi has it over bear line at the stripe. He does. Fastest lap for Lacey, 23.13. Tyler Landon Lacey, by the way, fastest lap of the race at a 23.13. Bearline now faces trouble for fifth position. Dylan Clark trying to look to the inside. See if he can make the spot stick. Clark can't make it up just yet. Here comes Crowell with the 54 and Salter in the 88. Vice behind them, that orange card, that number 28 in orange, still has a chance for that final stage point. Whoa, hey got Salter. Nice save. Loses eighth to McCarthy. Now let's see what happens. That's the battle for ninth position. Tom Paris still a part of it too. Going side by side, three laps to go in stage number one. Still continues to be Landon Lacey out in front. Six tenths of a second lead on Tyler Isley, followed by Ryan Broder. Hey, Smeal Jr. saying something on the radio while he's in the pits. Dylan Park rounding out the top five. Pits are closed for the rest of the stage. Staying single file will go back to David Salter in 10th with Tom Para right behind him. Gap between 10th and 11th, just about a half second. Stage is not over yet, one lap to go. In front of them, good show for position. This is that's for eighth, McCarthy and Crowell, that's for seventh, excuse me. Meanwhile, in turns number three and four, here comes Landon Lacey, first star of the National Sim Racing League, first stage win in the National Sim Racing League. Got a full course caution, watch out. And that will end it in stage number one. Salter with the final playoff point over Para. McCarthy edged out Crowell. We'll keep it right here with you as pit stops are coming on up with how short this track is. We'll keep the end of stage one. And we'll check here. So Lacey picks up the stage win, followed by Isley Broderick. It's closed. Sakosi, Clark, Bearline, McCarthy, Crowell, Bison, Salter. So Pace Car waited up for Landon Lacey. Here, if we get some pit stops right now, and everybody's coming in. The leader is pitting now. So, let's take a look at some chat here, real quick. Appreciate the support, Racer Girl 13. The Fast Racer 13 says way to bring it back. Bear line. So good to hear everyone in the pits. Lacey will watch his stop. Ooh, had to back it up, I think, a little overshot the sign. So we'll see here who wins this race off pit road. And it's a close one. Icely edges Lacey. Broderick, then Sakosi, then Bearline, Clark, McCarthy, Vice, Salter, and Crowell. That is your top 10 out. Tyler Isley will bring the field back to green when we come back for stage number two. Stay with us.
are back here at the Iowa Speedway, just getting ready to begin stage number two. And Tyler Isley winning the race off pit road, leading in stage number two for the first time today. And we have gotten reports that this man is back on track. Don't look now, Robinson is back. In 23rd position, he's a lap away from taking 22nd. So he has returned, so we only have, from the looks of it, three drivers out of the race, that being Brian Preslar, David Smeal Jr., cars in this lap. and Tyler Rush. So the drivers in front of Isley get a wave around. Let's reset the field as we get ready for the restart. Isley selects the outside line with Landon Lacey next to him. That is row one. Row two, that's Ryan Broderick and Mark Sikosi. Row three gives us Dylan Clark and Aiden Fairline. Row four, Kayla McCarthy and Robbie Bice rounding out the top ten. David Salter and Alan Crowell. Obviously the control car on this restart as we're set to begin stage number two. We had a good long run to begin the evening Green and flag. after we're that racing. we had a wreck fast. We're back to racing. Nice restart for Isley. Can he mark it down and clear land in Lacey? Yes he can. Lacey in second spot. Nicosi up on the top groove in third position. Broderick is in fourth. He's got a challenger to his outside. That's Aiden Bearline. McCarthy side by side. That's for P6 on the track. Off the corner, McCarthy tucking it back in line. Here we go for second spot. Sikosi trying at the outside once again. I think he adjusted the setup so he can try and get something for the outer group. Oh, we got trouble with McCarthy. McCarthy up in the wall in the 24. And I think that's a flat tire. Flat left rear potentially, unless that's the splitter. Let's uh, take a look and see what happened here. It was a long fallback for McCarthy. Oh, she got really loose in the corner. And thank you very much, David Salter, for helping her save it out. I don't know how anyone else did not get involved in the wreck. And now we're hearing Salter just went off track. Was there some lawn mowing potentially? Oh my goodness, he spun the car around and does a nice 360 off course. Keeps the race green. So no caution needed as Isley continues to lead. Lacey Sikosi, Broderick and Barrelai, they round out the top five. Two time winner this season and Tyler Isley. Took the win at the Daytona 300 and also won in the World 300 at the Kansas, at the Charlotte Motor Speedway. It's going to be the World 350, my mistake. But a fun season for Isley this year. Let's go to our best battle on track and it's actually, oh my! There goes Wiggins around and he gets contacted. Oh, course, be and that brings out the yellow flag. Seventh yellow of it the looks evening. Like Wiggins has gone off. We're under caution. Pits are closed. And yes, crew chief, that is Wiggins. Let's go to the replay. Oh man, he was way loose in turn two and a 40 in the field and then Contact from the 19 of Justin Delt sends him si slideways. Let's ride on board and show you how loose he was. Look at that, look how sideways he was. Trying everything you can do to get the car in the gas, but those rear tires are just chattering around. Tough break for Wiggins as he brings his, we're waiting for him to bring the car in. Couple of drivers are in pit road, Josh Susie, Justin Dilt, and David Salter. 
leave it here with you as we race chatter has been very quiet after we had a wreck break out I don't know if race control decided we're disabling chat or what but it has been quiet today Texpel88 we appreciate the follow tonight man Just waiting to get ready to go back to green. There should be two laps to the green flag this time. Let's talk about a couple of names here. Ryan Broderick. This has been maybe a surprise name that we are seeing up here race with us tonight. Has never finished in the top three. His best finish came in his debut at Kentucky. Was a fourth place finish, so we will check his progress throughout the night looking for his first podium a long way left to go how's the voice that rocks the most the voice is uh, the voice is doing well man it is doing well a little bit uh, I miss Brockport to say the least with the holiday season but uh, we are uh, I'm ready to get back on track that's for sure Should be going green flag racing this time by. Waiting for race control. And the lights are still on the pace car. For some reason we should be at one lap to green already. We still have two guys in the pits, of course, still from the accident, brake swoop. And Brian Wiggins is on his way out, but you see those lights on at the top of your screen, those lights flashing red that means the pit exit is closed so he has to wait till that turns green then he can go out so there he goes along with Briggs Swope now if he if he exited a closed pit that would just put him to the tail end of the lead lap so like if he beats out the pace car for example if there's a situation like that he could stay he could stay on the lead lap but just go to the complete tail end So we should be good to go back to racing. This should be our one lap to green. This will be our one lap to green. If it is not, then what the heck are we doing? All right, Marty, get ready. Race will resume at the end of this lap. There we go. One lap to green flag racing after our seventh caution of the evening. Icely selecting the inside line for this restart. Let's reset the field for you. Icely and Sikosi, that is row number one. Landon Lacey and uh, should be Ryan Broderick up there in row number two. And it is. He makes his way up. Aiden Barreline and Dylan Clark in row number three. Robbie Bice and Alan Crowell in row four. Rounding out the top ten, Tom Para and Daniel Menzies. So Isley ready to go for this restart. And we are just set to go back to the green flag. Get ready, get ready. Green flag, we're ready. racing. <laughs> Dylan Clark having a little bit of fun on the radio. Tries to break the, Icely trying to break the draft of Lacey as they make their way into turn number one. Rear line a little bit loose on the exit of turn number two, but keeps the car going. Stays back in fifth. Broderick shuts the door. He wants the inside. Looking for P3 on Mark Sikosi. Sikosi powers it off clearly and keeps third position. Landon Lacey goes a groove underneath compared to Isley. Can't get up to the spoiler off the corner. And stays in lockstep formation in second spot. One staying in that single file situation going down the back straight away. But once they get into the corners, drivers are just trying stuff out. Everyone taking it easy for right now. Driver is in the pits. That is Brian Wiggins. 
Landon Lacy though, all over Tyler Isley. There he goes, looks underneath. Oh, this is gonna be close here. Isley gives him a groove to work with and off the corner. Can't make the clear yet. Isley using the high side to his advantage. Lacy still trying once again. Oh man, way tight off the corner. I think he's just trying to get a slipstream off of Isley as Isley breaks the draft entering. Entered in a groove underneath. Lacy tries to dime in the corner off of turn number four and it's still right there. Chevy Camaro trying to make a run in the corner. Let's see who gets the advantage as they go down the back straightaway still. Tyler Isley. Sikosi just waiting for the top two to mess up. Lacey's still trying to find something once again. There he goes, takes a peek underneath. For the race lead, a drag race down the back. Lacey ends up in the quarter panel. The low line was the key groove in stage number one. This time in stage two, it could be the high side for defense. Lacey is squiggly bit loose in turn number three. Here comes Sikosi. Thinks about looking to the inside, but gets cut off. Tight off turn number two for Isley. Could open the door for Lacey. There he goes down to the inside. New leader, it's Landon Lacey at Iowa. Ryan Broderick looks inside of Sikosi, cuts it back just a little bit as Sikosi's trying for second spot. Isley still trying to rock the middle groove in turns one and two, but can't find anything, just trying to draft up to stage one winner Lacey. Back to the battle for third position. Sikosi gave Broderick something to work with, but then cut down to a lower groove, trying to look on Isley for second spot. Let's go to another good battle here. Let's go back to third to 12th position between Josh Susi. Was in a wreck earlier today with David Smear. Smeal. As that battle is on for position. Let's go to ninth spot here. Tom Para stuck three wide with Daniel Menzies, who is trying to rebound from his spin earlier. Can Menzies get the position to work? Kayla McCarthy, Josh Susi up in this battle too. He's right on board with Kayla as Tom Para all the way up to the Larry Lightning white wet lane. Lost track of the voice there for just a moment. We ride on board with Kayla. Josh Susi trying to make a run on Daniel Menzies. Battle on track for ninth position. A couple of extra bonus points on the line when we end stage number two. That comes at lap 150. We've got a good battle developing for second spot as well. Tyler Isley and Mark Sikosi, while Landon Lacey has opened the gap up to just about six tenths of a second. Sikosi just trying to find a line as they work on lap traffic. That's Robinson, who's been able to make his way back out on course. Let's see if any of the drivers use Robinson as a pick, and Sikosi says, I'm going for it. Down to the inside, contact between Isley and Robinson. Isley shoves him out of the way, and somehow Isley maintains control of second. I'm surprised Isley is not taken to the radio to express his displeasure with Robinson. But that was interesting. Sikosi, I'm surprised to not use it to his advantage, or, or he decided to say, you know what, I'm not going to race like that. You keep second spot, I'll race you when I get up to you. In Barreline currently in the sixth position, have doing a good job on the track as we continue to monitor that second place battle. Biggest mover of the race so far, we've got two guys that have each gone up 11 spots. Hang on a second, trouble for Brian Wiggins. That is on the front straightaway. Modelon once again. 
He's done that quite a bunch tonight. Turn four has not been his best friend. The exit of turn four to be specific. Let's go to the replay and show you this. Once again, goes through the grass, makes a nice save. So staying under the green flag as Landon Lacey has opened the gap up to 1.7 seconds on Tyler Isley, Mark Sikosi, Dylan Clark, and Ryan Broderick. Stay with us as we go side by side for the first time tonight at Iowa. If something else happens, we'll come right back to you. We are back here. Landon Lacey continues to lead the Christmas Classic 250 at Iowa Speedway. Delighted you could join us for this. Marty Sakala with you on the call for the National Sim Racing League Cup Series. And we wish you all a Merry Christmas out there. Two hours from now, we're celebrating Festivus, by the way. So there's that. 115 laps are currently in the book. Stage number two comes to an end at lap 150. Why don't we take the opportunity to give you a full field rundown. Landon Lacey is currently your race leader. Second position belongs to Tyler Isley. Good battle happening for a second spot, so let's actually focus on that before we go full field running. These guys have had a good battle throughout the entirety of stage number two as Sikosi trying to make that pass stick. He's got him, overdrives, turns one and two. The tires are starting to get used up here. Another long run here at Iowa Speedway, like we saw in stage one before we had a complete wreck fest. Dylan Clark making a pass for third position. That's a great run for the number 34 team so far today. So Sakosi loses two for one there. Clark's best finish came second twice. That came in the World 350 and at Chicagoland. So would love to go two straight podiums. He finished third last week at Pocono. Ryan Broderick trying to get into this mashup. And nothing there. So let's give you your full field rundown at the moment. Landon Lacey, he's your race leader. Tyler Isley is in second spot. Dylan Clark running in third. Mark. Excuse me, Mark Sikosi is fourth. Ryan Broderick rounds out the top five. Josh Susi, a nice rebound so far to sixth position. 
Robbie Bice is currently in seventh spot. Aiden Bearline is eighth. Kayla McCarthy ninth. The big battle for tenth happening between Alan Crow and Daniel Menzies for a stage point at the end. David Salter is currently in 12th position. Could make it 11th here shortly over Crowell. 13th is Josh Aaron. 14th, Tom Para. 15th is Paul Smeraldo. 16th is Justin Dilt. 17th is Jimmy Barr. 18th is Briggs Swope. Brian Wiggins currently pitting in 19th position. Brian Presslar is 20th. Alex Robinson is 21st. Out of the race, David Spiel Jr and Tyler Rush. Back to that battle for second position. Dylan Clark inside on Ice Lake. Clark loses control for a moment off of turn number four. Just got a little bit sideways. Keeps the car going. Bro, they've been battling for that second position. Landon Lacey is checked out of the field. We got one driver that we heard just scraped the wall. Not sure of who it was. Isley's got the edge off of turn four for right now. See how that high side's driving. Been running pretty well on a long run. But not that time. Clark still has something. Can he clear for second position? Here comes Silsey into the battle as well. Remember, he spun earlier back in stage number one. Oh boy, could he go for a recovery and possibly win the race? We'll have to see as Susie looks for P3. Can he get it to work? Yes, he can. Clears away Tyler Isley for third. Remember for Susie, five wins on the season for the driver of the number 12. Currently your point leader at the moment. Remember, see, you see that left side damage? That's a couple of scuffs. Running that, that car's still driving nice and pretty. Here's the mess up happening here for 11th position. Aiden Verline's lost a lot of time to the leaders as Alan Crowell looks inside for the 12th position. They are part of the last cars on the lead lap. 14 drivers on the lead lap. Justin Dilt's the first car a lap down. We go back to the battle for a second spot. Josh Susi. Wants control of the runner-up spot. He's got it. Remember with Susie as well. He pitted on lap 88. Everyone else of the top nine pitted on lap 77. So Susie's got 11 laps of fresher tires. Currently approaching a 40-lap stint. Right now for Lacey, guaranteed it's on a 50 lap stand. We got one slow off the pace, it's Alex Robinson. And there's the caution as he comes to a stop on track. I think the engine just went kaboom. That's the third accident today for Alex Robinson and that brings out another yellow of this race. And we will see pit stops from the drivers. That is a fact. Pace car is out, pits are closed. We'll ride on board here with Robinson and just confirm the kaboom. There it is. Either that or he just ran out of fuel. Let's, let's, we'll rewind the footage here. And we'll just listen to see if his car was still going. He was still going there. Yep, engine blew up. Pit road is open and everybody is coming in except for Mark Sikosi, who was playing a little bit of strategy. Remember, he's got, he's used up two tire sets. In this race, the only driver to stay out. Now that's very interesting considering that Iowa is a track where you want tires. So Landon Lacey looking to win the race off pit road and he does. We'll see who comes out in second. That's Josh Susie. Dylan Clark edges Tyler Ice the out for third. Then it's Ryan Broderick. It's gonna be Justin Deltz, then Ryan Broderick and Kayla McCarthy. 
Remember, Justin Diltz was the first car a lap down, so he was able to receive a wave around. The lead car's pitting. And now we are hearing Sakosi comes back in, so just wanted to lead an additional lap. Try and get an extra lap on those tires, possibly. Remember, by the way, with these new with these new um, wheels, Goodyear has provided with one lug instead of five lug nuts. The time on the tires is going to be a lot faster. However, though, the tires will be done before the fuel man fills up. So we'll probably see about oh, we'll still probably still see about 11 second stops. Robinson says in the chat, "We're done." I don't blame you. So Robinson will end the day in 21st position. That puts three drivers out of the race. A couple of drivers are waiting for to come on out. Justin Diltz. Oh, wow. Diltz spun it, I think. What on earth happened here? This is on board. What is... I don't know what he's doing. He was backing it up. I don't know what that's about. Unless he had the car in neutral. Or he was taking a break or something. And then just realizes, surprise, surprise. Very odd. So we'll have just under 20 laps to go in stage number Dulce. We're on our eighth caution of the race. While we're at it, I'll give you the Get chance ready. to tell you. At the end of this lap. While we're at it, I'll give you a chance to tell you that next week the National Sim Racing League is back to road course racing. We're at Road America for the American 180. That is 45 laps around an incredible road course, one of my favorite road course facilities. That's not named Watkins Glen. We're live at 8.45 p.m. on twitch.tv slash Marty Sakala and the National Sim Racing League Facebook page. Give us, give me a follow on Twitch at Marty Sakala if you've loved the work tonight and also like us on Facebook at National Sim Racing League. Here we go, ready to go back to green. It's Lacey, Susie, Clark, green, green, Isley, green. and McCarthy, your top five. We're back to racing. Not a great jump for Isley at all. Faces a challenge for the fourth position. As Lacey holds serve up on Josh Susie. Clark reigned in third position, side by side with Isley. Tries to look down low on, Isley, on Susie, but he shuts the door on him. They continue to go at it for that spot. Change in 11th position. Aiden Bearline and Alan Crow continue to do battle. Ryan Broderick tries the top shelf up on Dylan Clark. Can he get the run? No. Clark shuts the door on him. And Broderick takes a peek down low. He drives there hard in the corner. Wow, what a pass for Broderick. Does the slide job up on him. He's up to P4. And now we have a battle for second position. Josh Susi, Tyler Isley. Isley trying to get the run off the corner on the high side. He gets it to stick. Here comes Susie. Here comes Broderick looking for a third up on the outside of Josh Susie. Pretty much the only ones we have seen to get it to work on the outside of Ben. Sakosi and Isley can Roderick make it work this time. 
and he can. Broderick clears away Susie. His next opponent is Tyler Isley for second. Much of great improvement for Ryan Broderick after what happened last week at Pocono. Back and forth he went when he was blocking, and it cost him a lot. Lynn says, looks like a glitch. That was crazy. I agree, Chris. That was uh, pretty bad. So Lacey with a half second lead. Let's go to a good battle on track. This is here for seventh position. Robbie Bice, David Salter, Daniel Menzies, Aiden Fairline. This is seventh through tenth on the track. Menzies with a run underneath on Salter. Can't get it to stick. Again, high side where you want to be for the exits of the corners. There goes Salter, tries something up top on Bice. Salter started from 17th all the way up to the eighth position. It's been very quiet so far today. Not a lot of wrecks we have seen from him. He did go off track once in this race, but had a great save. See what he can do here. He gets the run onto the inside. This battle is on. Closest battle on the track. In addition to Mark Sikosi, just taking away 10th from Daniel Menzies after pinning a lap later. 10 laps to go in stage number two. Again, the stage ends at lap 150. And the top 10 are awarded bonus points. Checking around and seeing what's going on here. Caroline trying to close in. Same with Sakosi. Let's ride on board with the number 91. A lot of drivers sticking in, stick, sticking in fourth gear today, not needing the fifth gear in the next gen cars. Of course, going up to five gears in Cup Series racing for next season. And it's all sequential as well. Takes a peek inside. Ninth spot on the line, challenging with Aiden Verline. Get it to work off the corner, yes. Pass works for Mark Sikosi, he's up to ninth. Verline facing a challenge from Daniel Menzies for 10th. We'll get to that when the time comes. Let's go back to the Bice Salter battle happening for seventh position. Six laps to go in stage number two. And Salt Bice gets a little bit loose off the corner, way loose. Oh, they're working on a lap car. That's barring the number 81 that stacks him up just a little bit. That battle heats up just a little bit more. Sakosi wants eighth position. Meanwhile, Salter wants seventh. He's got it on Bice. Sakosi takes the groove higher, trying to make the pass work on Robbie Bice. Four to go in stage two. He got gets it to stick at the start finish line. Aiden Bearline in the tenth position. Menzies just a quarter of a second behind him. Now they work on the lap car of Greg Swope in the seven. Who goes the lap down all the way up the track he goes, lets the leaders race it out. Another good battle happening on hands, that's for third position. Josh Susi has caught back up to Ryan Broderick with three laps to go in stage number two. Two laps to go this time by, the pits are closed when Lacey comes across the start finish line. Right on board with Susie. Excuse me, that's Broderick, let's go from his rear end. Oh, nice corner from Susie. Diamonds that opens up the door, he wants third position. 
And he's got it. Josh Susi is up to P3. Final lap underway in stage number two. We can tell you this, Robbie Bice currently is in 10th position. We're keeping our eyes on this battle for third position. Droderick may have one last chance, and I don't think he's gonna get there. He may have to send it in if he wants P3. Off of turn four, meanwhile, stage two, Landon Lacey. He won stage number one. Cool course, this course, time, he gets stage number two. We'll keep it with you as we await green flag, as we wait the pit stops for the end of the stage. Your top 10, Lacey, Isley, Susie, Broderick, Clark, McCarthy, Salter, Sakosi, Bearline, and Bice. That push. was your it's top close. 10. The yellow before the stage ending really bit Sakosi in the dust. As he can only come back to an eighth place finish where he likely could have had a chance at a top three or maybe even a top five. Everyone's in. And we will watch Landon Lacey's pit stop. Leaders pitting now. By the way, while we're out, we appreciate you all coming on in tonight. 20 views at the moment. That, is, that may be the most viewed National Sim Racing League broadcast we have had. So it's Lacey that wins the race off pit road. Followed by Broderick, Susie, McCarthy, Swope, Sakosi, Clark, Salter, and Bice. Daniel Menzies stays out to lead a lap here at Iowa Speedway. And he'll continue to stay out. And we'll pause here. When we come back, it's the final 100 laps here at Iowa. Gamer 2, what you see and what you hear is what you feel. Butt Kicker, the future is feeling. Here at the Iowa Speedway 
It's the National Sim Racing League Cup Series from Iowa Speedway, our final race before Christmas. It's the Christmas Classic 250. Again, we are, we are so okay, glad Martin, that you can join us. Round number 19 of the Christmas Classic 250, and we can't do it without all of our sponsors. Speed Demon Setups, Graphics, and TV, Affordable SEO and Marketing, Elevated Outdoors, and Butt Kicker. Register now for the 2022 NSRL Chili Bowl Nationals. Just go to nationalsimracing.com for more info. We've got Chili Bowl and Fort Crown Nationals, so stand by for more info on that. Ready to go back to green. Daniel Menzies stayed out under caution. Takes the inside line. Ryan Broderick and Josh Susie is row number two, row three. Kayla McCarthy and Mark Sakosi, row four is Dylan Clark and David Salter. Rounding out the top 10 is Robbie Bites and Tom Para. Here we go as Menzies brings them back to green for the restart. Green flag. And it's Lacey that gets the jump off of turn number two. It's a mess. Broderick takes it three wide. Sends it in big time. Does he get second spot? No. He gets third out of it, though. They're still three wide with other guys off the corners. Broderick nearly makes contact with Susie. That puts Susie up in his second. Broderick third. Sakosi is up to fourth, and McCarthy is fifth. Oh, Susie. Susie goes around. Somebody hit him, and that's Menzies. Second time tonight we have seen Susie involved in an accident. And we got more trouble in front of them. Crowell is involved and same with Aiden Bearline. Paul Smirano, we're hearing as well, got a piece of the action too. We're under caution, pits are closed. Our 10th caution of the evening here at Iowa. Let's watch this once again for Check Josh Fusey. This was a simple getting loose moment. Broderick and Sakosi do a nice job to miss him. Then Menzies gets involved in that as well. Now what happened with Alan Crowell in the 54? Did he get loose as well? Missing the wreck goes down on the apron to miss it. Oh, something happened with Barreline and Crowell head on into the inside wall. Let's watch Bearline here in the number five. He got loose off the corner and comes down into Isley. It's the second accident number five has been in tonight. We ride on board with Josh Susie. This is from the rear end. How much damage does it do to Susie? How how bad is it? That's the real question. This is Aiden Bearline. Oh man, just too much wheel in it. And hits icely, around he goes. Let's go to Alan Crowell. That's a shot. Remember, Iowa Speedway is a track that is around the outside entirely covered in safer barrier. It's not like that for the inside walls, though. Let's go to Paul Smeraldo. And that was just hitting on the brakes to make sure he didn't hit anyone. So our 10th caution of the evening Susie is back to the 10th position, so it doesn't do really too much to Susie. But it keeps the car going, just looking at the damage. He still has that left side damage. I think, I think the damage he suffered came on the front end on the race car. 
front end does look a lot different than compared to what it was. That could be some good arrow damage. There's a close-up of it that could help us out. You can see how the valence on the, on your screen is a little bit up more than it usually is. That could maybe possibly help. And the grill is also punched in too. So we'll get a little bit more. The leader is going to take the top. Get a little bit more optional repair. So we should be coming to one lap to green this time by. You did hear Landon Lacey say that he is going to choose the top for this restart. Should be one lap to the green flag. We're going green next time by. Alrighty. Let's reset the field for you. Landon Lacey, the race leader, selects the outside line as we get set to go back to the green flag. Sikosi restarting second. Row number two is Ryan Broderick and Kayla McCarthy. The third row, Dylan Clark and David Salter. Row four is Robbie Bice and should be Tom Perra as he makes his way up. Rounding out the top ten is Briggs Swope and should be Brian Preslar. Drivers are not tightening up. The 16 of Perra should get his get his Toyota up there. Well, good luck with the rest of the race, guys. And, whoa, that's Isley. Isley, I think that may have been from the wreck, so Isley is out of this race. We are hearing... He just said it on the radio. Green flag, we're racing. So we come back to green under 90 to go. Lacey holds serve as Sikosi and McCarthy. Duke Yana for second spot. Advantage could be McCarthy off of turn number two with that 14 degrees of banking. She's got it barely for right now. Sikosi still fighting and the duel down the back straight away. Broderick in that battle as well. McCarthy edges out for P2. And McCarthy clears. Oh, McCarthy is loose. Can she save it by herself? Yes. Wow, that's incredible driving from Kayla. 316. Four wide as well. Down the back straight away. And that cost her nine spots all the way back to 11th. Wow. That was oh so close. Opens up a nice gap as well for Lacey on Sikosi. Just about seven tenths of a second. Let's watch Josh Susie as he tries to make his way back up through the field. Trying to pass Daniel Menzies. That is him and McCarthy. The teammates. Oh, McCarthy with some contact with Paul Smirado. Smirado almost makes contact with Susie. I don't think the KTM, the KTS drivers are going to be happy at Smirado for that. They are way back though on Aiden Bearline in the number five though. Good battle happening. Oh, we got a car loose off the pace. And that is Salter in the number 88. Only puts him back to seventh position. How about Tom Para? In the number 16, if he finishes sixth, that would be his best finish in the National Sim Racing League. That'd be awesome to see from a fellow New Yorker who also loves, who also is a big A.J. Allmendinger fan. He has my support on that too. Go to fourth position, Robbie Bice and Dylan Clark. For Robbie Bice, only his second start, finished 20th last week at Pocono. So would love to have a great improvement with fourth or maybe even a third place finish. Ryan Broderick, meanwhile, trying to close in on Mark Sikosi. Sikosi has closed the gap down, luckily to three tenths of a second. Why do we compare the lap times here on your screen? 
between Lacey and Sakosi. Sakosi has been faster in the last five laps by just about a tenth. Lacey may be saving some tires. For both of them just pitted about 20 laps ago under the stage break. And we'll check it here. Sakosi's got the draft. He's trying to look to the inside. Nearly two tenths faster for Mark Sakosi. So this is a big battle happening on track for the race lead. Been a while since Mark Sakosi last led in this race. Last time Mark Sakosi was the race leader. Last time he took the lead, you have to go back to lap 130. That was during pit stops as well. So keep that in mind as well. Yep, is opening up still just a little bit to a half second. Let's go back to the Bison Clark battle for fourth position. Salter also are part of it too. Clark closing in just a little bit. There you see how the gap looks on your screen. Both keeping it on that second group near contact between Clark and Bice. See if he tries to make the pass work. Not yet, just about a car length and a half separating each other. Dylan Clark has had a good car so far tonight, probably the best of the three. He does have the faster lap compared to the other two. 23-33 versus a 23-36 from the other two. Fastest lap of the race, by the way, does belong to Tyler Isley, who is out of the race with a 23-16. Here goes Clark inside. This is for fourth. See if he can get the pass to work here at the stripe. It was close. Bice edged out Clark. See what happens in the corner. Clark with the advantage in turns three and four had the better speed down the back straight away and he can clear Bice for fourth and he does. Clark started from 16th position, did not qualify, did not take a an attempt at time trials. And it's up to fourth. Speaking of biggest movers, let's take a look at them right now. Biggest mover. Tom Parrott up 16 spots up to 7th position started in 23rd last position up to 7th and it's Clark and then David Salter started in 17th up to 6th position so we'll pause here once again as Landon Lacey leads Mark Sakosi, Ryan Broderick, Dylan Clark, Robbie Bice and we pause we'll go side by side once again here at Iowa.
We're back here at the Iowa Speedway. You saw it as well while we were side by side. This man had another close call. That's Brian Wiggins in the number one machine. We'll get you the replay here in just a moment. You, if you saw it pop up on the bottom that he entered pit lane, he did not enter pit lane. Watch this. Turn four has been his enemy. Another beautiful save from Wiggins and keeps it going. Now, I don't know if they'll pop him for an illegal entry in the pit road, but that should be cleared by Chris Lynn. Been a tough race for Brian Wiggins, currently in the 18th position, eight laps down. Give you another good battle. We'll go over here to this battle between Brick Swope and Aiden Barreline. And that is for the 10th position on track. Barreline trying to increase it as Swope is stuck up on that outside. Right on board with Swope, with Swope in the holiday festive scheme. Let's know, by the way, in the chat, who you were rooting for today. We appreciate you all coming on out. A great feud race. A total of 20 viewers making their way out. We had a peak of 24, I think, at one point. So it's great to see everyone come out on this holiday, holiday weekend. And also, if you are liking what you are seeing here, hit the follow button. I am live pretty much, and I'm a freelance iRacing broadcaster, for those wondering. I'm pretty much live every weekday. Monday, we broadcast the Coast to Coast Racing League, Monday Night Madness on Dirt Car Racing uh, with 360 Sprint Cars. And then Tuesday, I'm not live, uh, but we do XCAL Racing. I commentate on that if you follow How to Suck at iRacing. I'm broadcasting with Doug Burns there. We got this tonight. This is pretty much an every Wednesday thing for me. Thursday, we do the we do the Powerhouse Racing League, and we got the final two races coming up in January, so don't miss out on that. And, I, and we are also at Iowa uh, when we come in January. And then finally, um, I don't do really anything on Friday or Sunday. Saturday, beginning in January, Saturday night, we will be broadcasting the Bootleg Racing League Grand National Series for the Virtual Grip Network. Uh, so we'll, caution and caution careful. flag is out. We got big trouble. Brian Wiggins upside down, along with Brian Presler. You don't want to be a Brian in this situation, so ends another long run and should lead to our final pit stops of this race. Happened off yeah, of turn number. Would have just turned right. Oh boy. Let's take a look. We're under caution. It's closed. Wiggins again loose. Does he come up the track? He does. And right into the path of both Preslar and Dilds. And that's like a Casey Mears flip from Auto Club in 2008. That's from Wiggins' perspective in the rack. Check it up in the three and four. Let's go to Preslar. Lead cars pitted. Oh my, what a shot. Nowhere to go. That's a tough situation. You don't really want to try and overcorrect the car. If you're a guy like Brian Wiggins, I understand you're trying to keep the car straight, trying to prevent from a yellow from coming out. But if you just don't turn that car to the right, I mean, although you'll spin out, uh, you're below the you're below the apron, you won't do anything with the car. You will uh, it'll just spin out on you, and you'll keep the race green regardless of what happens. So I understand Wiggins' situation, but at the same time, you just can't be doing that. Pit stops are underway. Final stops of the day. And Mark Sacolsi beats Landon Lacey out of pit road. It was a 15-2 versus a 16-3 on the pit stops. And that could be a money stop for Mark Sacosi. Approaching 50 laps to go. Oh, boy. All the drivers, by the way, do have one set of tires left so they could use it in case we get a late race caution. 
and could lead to some final stop situation. Still have a couple of drivers in the pits. Josh Aaron, Justin Delt, Alan Crowell, Brian Wiggins. But oh boy. This is going to get interesting. You do not want to miss it, folks. So while we're out, let's have you listen to some race chatter at home and break down what is happening. On the track, we have currently 12 drivers on the lead lap. And it is about to get crazy. Josh Aaron, we believe, received a free pass. If not, it was Menzies. But if it was Menzies, then there is no free pass because Menzies was... Nope, it would be Menzies, but he was not involved in the wreck. All right. I'll, I'll be near him again. So that should give us five drivers out of the race, if not six drivers out of the race. Wiggins and Dilt wow, drivers. are likely done for the day. Brian Preslar still trying to get the car back out there, even with a demolished front end. Remember, no quick repairs. That was a real change that came earlier Later in the week. Be taking the bottom. Previously, you could have one quick repair, but in order to prevent the amount of yellows, that has changed. So far, we haven't really seen that yet tonight, and we'll show you the amount of yellows that we have seen in this race. 11 cautions in this okay, race. Okay, Marty, get ready. Race will resume at the end of this lap. So, one lap until we go back to green. And we go to the end. I don't think we'll see pit stops anymore. Sakosi selects the inside line for this restart. Back out front since lap 130. With Landon Lacey next to him. Row number two, it's Dylan Clark and Ryan Broderick. The third row finds teammates. They look a lot similar. David Salter and Robbie Bice. Row number four, Briggs Swope and Kayla McCarthy. Rounding out the top ten is Aiden Bearline and Josh Soucy. Here we go, folks. 54 laps to go at Iowa. Green, green, green. Let's go. Sakosi fires this time on the green flag, and we're back to racing. Roderick trying to find something for Landon Lacey. He is yet to make a pass on Lacey tonight, but he may go for it right here. Can Broderick get up to second position? Tight off the corner. Oh, he's got to save it for just a split second. And that keeps him at the third spot. Everyone staying single file amongst the top five until here Aiden Bearline, Robbie Bice. Going at it, Bice tried to look for a pass. Let's see what Kayla McCarthy can do here. Tried to look to the inside, Bearline kept the lane going. Josh Susi trying to look inside on Briggs Swope. That's for ninth on the track. susie has been a part of two spins tonight with minimal damage. So trying to make a way to rebound. Makes the pass work, here we go. Battle for second, Broderick tries to get back on Lacey. Not yet at all. Let's ride on board here with Broderick. Caution. Caution's back out. And we've got Kayla McCarthy involved in this one. And along with Robbie Bice. Oh, man, that's junk. Bearline, Bice. I see Menzies and Swope. That is what could be the big one in our 12th yellow of this race. I have a feeling someone got into the infield grass and then came back up right into traffic that one may have been Kayla McCarthy pace car is out pits are closed let's take a look at the replay oh Bice comes down into barreline 
McCarthy goes into the grass to save it. Check it up on the back stretch. And that's a great save for McCarthy to keep it on the track. And let's take it in real time with uh, Bice. Bice got squirrely there into bear line. Hard shot for bear line. That could be his raise. And there's Bice. Menzies nowhere to go. That's a lot of neck code off of Menzies. And Swope has lost the front cover. A lot of drivers that could be their race tonight. This is Bice's on board. Look at that. Here's Aiden Bearline. Nowhere to go at all, and then there he goes, gets turned. Second time he's gotten turned tonight in that area, I believe. Look at the neck code dealing with Menzies. Show you Briggs Swope. Oh man, didn't even have the brakes on until we net coated Menzies. So that is your 12th caution of the evening. We do have a couple of drivers in, none of the leaders are in. As Mark Sakosi remains out there on the track, we'll listen to some race chatter while we are at it. Pretty quiet at the moment. And that should be two laps until we go back to green. coming in this lap. So here we go, going back to the green flag. Sakosi on the inside line for this restart with Landon Lacey next to him. Row two, it's Ryan Broderick and Dylan Clark. And again, Broderick's looking for what would be his best career finish if he finishes in third or higher. Row number three is David Salter and Kayla McCarthy. Josh Susi and Tom Perra will make up row number four. Then Josh Aaron, and that should be Robbie Bice rounding out the top 10. It's still scattered all around as we get ready to go back to this green flag. 45 laps to go. So go see the control car for this restart. Nice restart for Sakosi. Broderick looking to the inside of Lacey. 
Can he get it this time? He gets a little bit tight in the center of one and two. Can't make it yet. Clark holds serve on Salter for the fourth position. Roderick all over that rear end. Goes a groove higher on the exit. Here goes McCarthy thinking about looking underneath on Susie. They work together to get by the 77 of Josh Aaron. That's for sixth and seventh respectively. Aaron trying to fight back. Up on the outside of Kayla McCarthy. Does he have it at the stripe? Yes. So he's got the out, outer groove working out for him so far. That makes the clearance. Tom Paris side by side with Isley, not for a position though. A personal best coming from Dylan Clark, 23.3. Is trying to close in on Broderick for third position, but has a challenge with David Salter for P4. Clark and Salter each up 12 positions, starting in 16th and 17th respectively. Top five, nose to tail at the moment. Susie behind it in sixth position. He is not out of this fight just yet. They're side by side behind. Salter takes a peek underneath on Clark for the spot. See if he can get it to work. Clark edges Salter at the stripe. And Salter can't get it just yet. One driver is in the pits. That's Brian Preslar. The 67, I think he's gonna try and get that car back on the track and yes he is. Course Caution course. is out. out. Trouble for Dylan Clark. Clark went around the 34 machine. And I think it was a solo car spin. And there is a lot of damage. Leaking fluid from the back of the 34 machine. You see the puffs of smoke. And Dylan Clark's night, the possibilities. It's closed. The possibilities of a top five finish may have come to an end tonight. Let's take a look. Was running in the fourth position at the time. Oh, oh no, what a shot. Thank goodness everyone missed him. Get a better perspective on the onboard. Oh man, just overcorrected it. Felt it get a touch loose and, uh, man, you just hate to see that. That sucks big time. Only one driver is in the pits and that is Robbie Bice in the 28. So we'll pause here, we will go to a commercial break under caution flag and when we come back, we're taking you to the finish, commercial free. Stay with us, it's the Christmas Classic 250 from Iowa Speedway.
with the Butt Kicker Gamer 2, what you see and what you hear is what you feel. Butt Kicker. The future is feeling. Thirty-five laps remain here in the Christmas Classic 250 at Iowa Speedway for the National Sim Racing League Cup Series. So glad you could join us. We just have about six to seven races left before the playoffs begin. And they are definitely getting interesting for sure. You know, we had Preslar getting involved in a wreck today. That's helping out Tom Para. Presley are currently in 17th, while Para is in 8th. Uh, Dylan Clark just got involved in Iraq. That could help out Para too. No Crow, no Edwards, no Brennan Poole. So things okay, are getting Marty, interesting. Get ready. Race or resume at the end of this lap. Playoff time. Ready to go back to the re green for this restart. Oops. There we go. Let's reset the field here for you as we come back to green. Sakosi back on the inside line. Landon Lacey is next to him. In row number two, Ryan Broderick and David Salter. Row three, Josh Susi and Josh Aaron. Row four, Kayla McCarthy and Tom Perra. And row five, that should be Jimmy Barr and a lap car, I believe. Robbie Bites, actually, he's not lapped. This race is far from over, even with 13 Green cautions. Flag, Back to green, Sakosi tries to get up and clear Landon Lacey, and he does. Roderick's got a fight on his hands against Salter for third position. Can he get it to work? Yes, he can. Salter, another great race for him. Actually, Salter, his best race so far, finished 18th last week at Pocono. Currently in fourth. Here we go for the race lead. Lacey is all over Sakosi. 16 hundredths is the gap. See if he can close it in. Top four currently nose to tail at the moment. Susie about maybe 10 car lengths behind on fourth place Salter. Aaron riding up the track could open the door for Kayla McCarthy to try and get a run to the inside. Can't find anything there, just just had a change from 14th. Daniel Menzies goes by Dylan Clark. Sakosi still leads. Half a car length. Landon Lacey closes it in. I think Lacey is better in the entry of the corner while on the exit. Sakosi has the advantage. Why don't we compare the lap times? Check it out this time by as well. Because remember, lap 217 was uh, a caution lap. Oh, Lacey tried there. Check it at the stripe. Just about identical laps. It's been Sakosi just with a slight advantage. But Lacey, again, tried to close in. Oh, he drove it in deep that time. Opened the gap for Sakosi a little bit. Lacey is driving it as hard as he can. Remember both drivers pitted on lap 192. Different lanes this time as we go behind for a battle for third. Salter trying to look inside on Broderick, nothing there.
Back to the battle for the race lead. 26 laps to go. This race is far from over for the battle for the lead and for the battle for third. Salter still trying. Broderick back on the gas first for third. Oh, half a groove lower underneath. All the way to the bottom before getting, hitting the yellow line. Go behind them, another good battle happening. And that's for the sixth position. Kayla McCarthy inside on Josh Aaron. See if she can make the pass work. Tries to set it up. Oh man, nothing. Losing a bit more time, and she tries it once again. I think it's going to work this time for Michaela. Surprising, nothing yet. Let's go back. Battle for the lead. Lacey all over Sakosi. Lacey tries the inside. Can he get the run? Remember, Sakosi is so good on the exits of the corners. Sakosi leads it just by about a rear tire. What a race the top two have put on from wire to wire. Lacey, can he clear it? Oh, it's that close. Lacey had possibly his best exit in stage three today. Oh, he can clear up on Sakosi on the crossover. For the lead with 21 to go, Sakosi says, not so fast, my friend. Lacey trying to win it in his debut like Ashton Crowder did. Sakosi not giving it up just yet. Sakosi second in points coming on in. His lone win of the season came at Myrtle Beach Speedway. That race happening back on October 6th. Other than that, two second place finishes and two third place finishes. Pardon me, no seconds and two thirds. The third place finishes coming at Nashville, at the Nashville Fairgrounds to be specific, and Kentucky Speedway. Last two races, he's finished outside of the podium with two fourth place finishes at Pocono and Nashville Super Speedway. Lacey tries to look underneath this time. He's got the run. Oh, Lacey goes around. Nice save in the grass. He put too much throttle into it. And the, and the man that won the first two stages, his night may come to an end for a win. What a tough break for Landon Lacey. Puts him back into the fifth position. And so now because of that, that gives Ryan Broderick. Oh, the yellow is out and it's for Tyler Isley. Oh boy, just when you thought things were about to end when Mark Sakosi was about to pull away with the W, not just yet. Let's take a look. Oh, Icely just got a little bit loose and I wanna watch that onboard a little bit closely. I want to see as well, and I rarely look at these, but we're going to go visor cam style. The leader is printing now.
Pit Road is in, and everybody is in for the leaders taking their final set of tires. This is, a, this is now the money stop right here. It's crunch time. And Sakosi wins the race off pit road. Susi gains a spot up to third on David Salter. Lacey comes out in fifth position. He's still in this race with the yellow flag. So we will just have to see what happens. Icely back into the pits. So we get ready to come back to the green flag. We've got 14 laps to go. Tell your friends to come on in and watch the final laps. We've got a good finish brewing to the end. So let's talk about the drivers right now. We, you know, we already talked about Mark Sakosi. One win at Myrtle Beach. No second place finishes, but he's got two thirds on the year at Nashville Fairgrounds and Charlotte. He has finished in the top five in the last three races. Let's go to Ryan Broderick in the number five machine. He started off the season strong, a fourth at Kentucky. He's got two top five finishes this season. Had a top five at Sonoma. He has never finished on the podium. Josh Susie, just when we thought he was out of this race with two spins, is still in this race. Third place right now, five wins on the year, looking for six to not just match Ashton Crowder on wins, but take the number one seat back from him when it comes to wins on the year. David Salter in fourth, his second start on the year. Imagine what he could do from nearly worst up to, up to the top, top three in a podium. We talked about Landon Lacey as well. First start, has won the first two stages, could have a chance at his first win. You've got the top five or you could have the field. What about the field? What about Josh Aaron potentially spoiling the party in the number 77? His best finish on the season is fourth. That came twice in the Daytona 300 and in the World 350. We talked. We haven't talked about Kayla McCarthy a lot today. Won at Auto Club on the Get season. Ready. It's been a rough race for her. Lap. We'll see what happens. Time to rack them and stack them up for the final 11 laps. This race is far from over in the Christmas Classic 250. Who's gonna win a gift? And who's gonna end with possibly a lump of coal? Mark Sakosi leads them. Takes the inside line with Ryan Broderick in second, row two. Josh Susi and David Salter. Row three, Landon Lacey and Josh Aaron. Row four, Kayla McCarthy and Briggs Swope. Rounded out the top 10, Jimmy Barr and Tom Para. Eleven laps to go. Pace car is in, waiting for Sakosi. There he green, goes. Green, green. Let's go. A bad restart for Broderick. All the way back to the fourth position. Susi is up to second. Lacey is up to third. Oh, there goes a car, yeah, and that's Salter, and that brings the yellow back out with a 360. Good car control from Salter after the spin that puts him back to 10th. We're under caution. Pits are Still closed. though, we'll get his best finish of after an 18th place finish. Guaranteed. However, though, that should put us with just about six laps to go, I would assume. 
Let's check that once again. Ryan on board here with Salter. It was not a good restart for Broderick. He spun the tires. Came back down. Too much throttle control. You now drivers are getting a lot aggr aggressive on the throttle in these final few laps. So that brings the yellow flag back out. And the race continues. What happens here? I think we're gonna. I think we should ask. We should think about this too, because we have yet to talk about this. We are in the final five laps. We're seeing the drivers all stacked up once again. Could we see the possibilities of the bump and run in the final laps? We're gonna see a lot of drivers trying some different lanes out. It's got this track again, like I said, multiple grooves. But could we see the bump and run potentially, like at Bristol? We'll just have to wait and find out. Again, we appreciate you all coming in with us tonight. Next week, Road America, 45 laps. Don't miss out. Start time 8.45 on twitch.tv slash Marty Sakala and the National Sim Racing League Facebook page. Two laps till we get the green flag. So that will give us a five lap shootout to determine who wins. drama right now at the virtual Iowa Speedway is palpable it is intense right now for the front four maybe even the front six perhaps the drivers that are in first and okay, fourth Marty, get ready race the regime at the end of this lap have had the cleanest race of all the drivers out there it is a five lap shootout to determine the winner of the Christmas Classic 250. Mark Sikosi selects the inside line. Josh Susi is second. Those are the top two in points coming into the weekend. In row two, Landon Lacey and Ryan Broderick. Row number three, Josh Aaron and Kayla McCarthy. Row four, Jimmy Barr and David Salter. And rounding out the top 10, Tom Para and Robbie Bice. Five circuits to determine the win. Will this go green to the end or will we have a caution that brings us to overtime? Pace car is in, Sakosi the control car, back green to car. green. Stay side by side in the one. Can Sakosi hold the serve on Josh Susi? Still up there out of turn number two. Up on the quarter panel, let's see what happens. Susi on the outbreak on Sakosi. May have locked them up just a little bit off the corner. Can Sakosi clear? Not just yet. Here comes Susi. 
three wide for the lead. Landon Lacey to the bottom. Can Lacey get the advantage? Sakosi shuts the door on Suzy. And they make contact for the race lead. Here comes Ryan Broderick in the number five with a chance at third position. Maybe with a chance at second. It's Landon Lacey trying to shut the door. Puts Sakosi in the wall. Three to go. Susie got loose off the corner. That puts him back to fourth, maybe fifth. Ryan Broderick inside for the lead, looking for the slide job on Lacey. Moves him up the track. Lacey nearly clips the wall. Two lap shootout. Who's going to get their first win in the National Sim Racing League? Ryan Broderick, Landon Lacey, or will let Mark Sikosi spoil it away? Two lap shootout. Broderick sent it in hard, but does Ryan Broderick get the lead away? Broderick's gonna have to do a lot of side drafting here off of turn four. Way tight, moves him off the track. Lacey gets sideways, he's at the wall. No caution, white flag is out, one to go. Ryan Broderick versus Mark Sikosi versus David Salter. The bump and run. Sikosi turns Broderick. He's out of it. David Salter takes the lead away. Three and four. Can you believe this? Spin and win Salter. Wow. David Salter gets the win in the Christmas Classic 250. And his face lighting up like a Christmas tree in the most improbable of ways. The fireworks go up. And David Salter takes home the win. And here comes Robbie Bice to give him a nice congratulations. Mark, I apologize. I wasn't trying to squeeze you there all four. And Salter, this is going to be the best yeah, burnout of Salter's yeah, life. Yeah, everything happened so quick. Uh, good win there, David. That's, that's a tough one. Tough one to swallow, but. Mark, I blocked you a little bit there. Don't feel bad. You, you did great. Oh, no, what a, fail, what a failed burnout. Caught the wall. He does not care, though. Burn that sucker down, David. Here comes Broderick, by the way. I think he's looking for someone. Oh, boy. Broderick and Sikosi. Oh, you guys. That was the best race that I've seen in a wall. It's probably the best race I've seen on iRacing ever. So let me tell you guys something. That is fucking awesome. That we apologize for that language. Here comes a Salter Vice burnout. This is going to be fun. Those are my favorite burnouts. Wow. We are all still speechless here on this race. This is the craziest race we have seen this season. Salter is in the playoffs as well with that win. That's that's even crazier. We're trying to find your top three as well. We're waiting for them. And there's the blow up. And we'll start things off. You know what? We're, we're going to hold on interviews here real quick. Before we talk to your winner... We're going to the replay. Show you the final lap. First we saw Lacey. How did Lacey get loose first off? Show you that. Broderick and Lacey make contact. Here's the white flag and it's a three car battle. Sikosi, the bump and run to Broderick. They make contact. That gives Salter the lead. 
and it's nothing. That's it. Sakosi, nothing at the end. The contact helps out, gets, gives Salter the pass for the lead. Only leads one lap in this race, and it's the most important one, the last lap. I still don't know what to say about this race. Craziest finish we have had all season long. And we are ready to talk with your top three. Let's start by talking with Josh Susie. Josh, I knew it was going to be a crazy finish. Just take us through your perspective and what you were thinking in those final five laps. Uh, I was thinking we'd give it everything I got and try not to wreck it because every time I pushed it on the short run, I, I wrecked the car twice tonight. <laughs> and uh, I, the car is really, really good on the long run. I was probably top one or two car you know, 30 plus laps, but we could never really get that. And, uh, we had that caution with like 15 to go or whatever it was. I was, I was really mad, <laughs> but, uh, I tried to tighten it up some, throw some adjustments at it and, uh, hope for the best. And I was having fun battling Skosi there. And next thing you know, his spotter comes across as three wide on the front stretch. And I was like, what? <laughs> so, uh, that kind of messed up my momentum and, uh, it allowed, um, Oh, who was it there? Uh, the guy that won the race. I'm sorry. Uh, David allowed him by me and, <laughs> and then they got to, to bumping and banging in front of him and he was able to keep his momentum up and take advantage of it. And, uh, I was for a split second. I'm like, man, these guys might all wad each other up and I can come away with this, but, uh, didn't quite work that way. And I'll take a top three after my very eventful night tonight. It definitely was. You spun out twice in that race. How were you able to even overcome all with all the damage you you suffered to make your way back up to third position? We saw the scuff earlier on the left side. We saw the front bumper. We saw the grill punched in as well and make your way up to third. Uh, just having a real fast piece and never giving up. Um, like I said, the car is really good on the long run, and I had a little motor damage, and I think – between the two wrecks, I had about two minutes worth of damage, but uh, I got most of that fixed. Uh, still had competitive lap times, so I don't know. It uh, aerodynamics played a little bit of a factor here, but they weren't too, too important. If that would have been like a, a Texas or something, that would have been toast. But thankfully, it's not here. Um, yeah, and I just had a fast piece and kept adjusting on it to compensate for the damage. And... Uh, Man, I really wanted that to go green, but it is what it is. We got an excited finish out of it. Who do you want to give shout-outs to tonight? Uh, everyone at KTS and TSM, um, Charge Racing, Nitro Setup Shop, all the admins here that did a great job. Everyone that showed up put on a pretty good race. Uh, first race with no fast repair was interesting. Uh, I can a little vindictively say, hey, I wrecked twice, didn't have a fast repair, and still got an interview. So that, that kind of makes me happy, and... Uh, yeah, everyone that showed up put on a good show. Uh, we're going road racing next week, so good luck to us all for that. Congrats, man, on the win. Merry Christmas. Thank you, Marty. You too. Josh Susie, our third place finisher. Let's talk with our second place finisher, that being Mark Sakosi. Mark, I think you know what I'm going to start off with, the final lap. Uh, just what happened on the contact between you and Broderick? Were you just looking for the bump and run and just move him up the track? Oh, give us one moment. There we go. I think we got him fixed now. Mark, in case you didn't hear my question, I'll repeat it uh, once again because I know the viewers out there heard it. I want to start off with what happened with you and Broderick. Were you just trying to move him up the track and give him the bump and run pretty much? Mark, got a copy? All right. We are having some technical difficulties with him. We'll get to Mark in just a moment. While we do that, we're going to victory lane. And, man, we're talking with a first-time winner and probably unexpected of all of what just happened, David Salter. David, how's this feel? Can you believe you're in victory lane? He's speechless. He's speechless right now, guys. He is speechless. David, you got a copy? Everyone's speechless on that finish. We're having issues with all of the guys here. So we'll try Mark again. 
Mark, you got a copy. We got nothing on him. It may be me. I don't know, folks. Try one more time. Mark, you got us? It may be me. I'll back out real quick. All right. We got him now. We got him now. I just heard you. Okay. All right. Mark, I'll start off with this. First off, man, the contact with Broderick. Were you just trying to pull the bump and run on him and just move him up the track? I was hoping he wasn't going to come down there. Uh, it was a massive block. Um, I tried to get my nose under there. Yeah, yeah, I was going to move him a little bit, but I um, ended up uh, uh, moving him a little bit more than I wanted to. Um, I think he wrecked there up too, so... Um, yeah, I apologize to him, but, uh, man, that was a tough one to swallow. That, uh, the car was so good. So good. Uh, Landon, Landon's car was, we had been identical most of the race. I mean, it, it was fun battling with him. Uh, really good race. A lot of fun. Um, man, I wish we could have got that win. Definitely understand, man. What was the mindset like when you went back to green with five laps to go? I think everyone knew it was going to get hairy. It was going to get aggressive. Yeah, I didn't want to see that. I, I, I wanted it to go green. Uh, <laughs> one, of, one of the restarts before that, I, I didn't want it. Getting that close and they were studying and watching when I was, uh, you know, just the timing of, in the restart box. And they were getting it closer and closer every time. And as soon as he nailed it there that last time, and uh, he hung right there on the outside and uh, – Stalled us out, and then it put us three wide, and uh, yeah, all hell broke loose from there. Who do you want to give shout-outs to tonight? Oh, I got to thank my teammates over at uh, Elevated Motorsports, uh, uh, Menzies, uh, Dilts, and Wiggins. Um, got to thank uh, Affordable SEO and Marketing, uh, uh, Speed Demon Setups, um, Elevated Outdoors, Butt Kicker, um, I got to thank uh, for everybody showing up tonight. It was a hell of a race. Uh, uh, I got to thank uh, everybody uh, that's been watching us on Twitch, uh, Facebook. Uh, uh, we appreciate them. All right, man. We'll let you go. Congrats, congrats on a great run. Merry Christmas. Thanks, you too. Merry Christmas. Mark Sikosi, second place finisher. All right. We know it's going to work now. It just worked with Mark. We're about to talk with the first-time winner, David Salter. Let it out, man. You're in victory lane. Can you believe it? No, actually, I cannot believe it, Marty. I mean, you went from a spin and win with 10 laps to go to making your way up in victory lane. Did you think that you were out of it when you spun out? I, I Honestly, I did. I, You know, being back in, what, ninth, 10th place on the restart, I figured I had no shot whatsoever. Walk, just walk me through your perspective in the final. I want to, let's go final two laps there. Just what are you thinking, looking in the in the windshield? Because when we came to the white flag, it looked like it was going to be a third place finish for you, as it looked like Sakosi and Broderick were going to battle to the end. Uh, I had a late late race spotter come in at, at almost uh, towards the end of the race there. He's he's talking me up. You got this. Don't worry about it. He watched my spin. He's like, he's like, you you kept it off the wall. No damage to the car. Your car looks like it's clean. I'm like, okay. I just the only thing I was hoping for is if the guys got into it, racing hard. These cars draft well. They race hard. They're easy to spin out. Uh, I had the I had the car for short, the medium run. Uh, it just. Send it and see what see what she'll do. Absolutely incredible, man. Uh, next week, Road America, give us your expectations for that. Honestly, I'm not good at road courses, so I actually may take the they may take the night off because I am I am horrible at road courses, and I don't want to screw anybody's race up. Who but do you want to get? It, yeah. Who do you want? It, it, I don't know. It, it, I may show up. I I don't know. Okay. Who do you want to give shout outs to tonight? I uh, want to shout out to uh, my teammate, Robbie Bice. Uh, me and him worked hard on this setup. We were pretty much running the same thing. Uh, full throttle motorsports. Uh, my wife allowed me to do this. Uh, 
the company I work for, for kind of sponsoring me a little, which is my company, Salter's Appliance Repair. Uh, all my teammates, my spotter, Josh Carver, at the last minute come in and, and uh, marking the guys for putting this on and uh, you for broadcasting it. Anything else you want to say about this, win? Just let it out, man. The mic's all yours. Uh, honestly, Marty, I, like I said, I'm speechless. This is <laughs> only my second win ever in a league race. That's and awesome, with man. Cars, with the cup cars, it's just – for me, I, I'm, I'm in another league, and it's long time coming to get a win in one of these cars, and it just feels great. Enjoy this one, man. T stay up late tonight on this one. Drink, drink some alcohol, man. Congrats on the win. Merry Christmas. Uh, you too, Marty. And th thanks for everybody that tunes in to, to your uh, broadcast. And uh, matter of fact, I can't wait to see the broadcast myself. Oh, you're gonna love the you're gonna love the finish, man, from third person. <laughs> Congrats, <laughs> man. All right, thanks, Marty. David Salter takes the win. And here's what we're gonna do. We are going to watch on board with David Salter. And here's what we have on as well. Uh, we have turned on the archived radio. And we're going to ride on board with Salter in the final lap. And just we'll have you listen to what everyone was saying in the chat. Checking if we have it. Oh, well, here we have it. We have it. Apologies there, folks. Here we go. Here we go. Nice racing, Mark. Hey, good job capitalizing on that, David. Thanks, Josh. Mark, I apologize. I wasn't trying to squeeze you there off four. So that was all the radio we had there, folks, but wow. What a race we had tonight, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, stage one was a little bit wonky, but once we got into stages two and three, that was just awesome to watch. David Salter, the win. Mark Sikosi, second. Josh Susi, third. Jimmy Barr, fourth. Tom Para. Tom Para, after all of that, gets a top five finish. His first ever top five. Good for him, man. That's awesome to see. Robbie by sixth. Landon Lacey, after winning the first two stages, finishes seventh. Kayla McCarthy, eighth. Josh Aaron, ninth. Ryan Broderick, after leading at the white flag, comes home in tenth. Wow. I mean, I don't know what you can say about this. We're definitely, right when this stream is over, uh, I will be watching back what went down in this race. This was absolutely incredible. Probably the best finish we ha will have all season long next to Auto Club. So that will do it for us again next week. We are at Road America for an, for an awesome race. Looking forward to it. Uh, 45 laps, I, belie I believe it is, if I recall correctly. Double check in here. 45 laps for the American 180. So that will do it for our broadcast tonight. And on behalf of, uh, of everyone at the National Sim Racing League, and a special shout to all of our sh sponsors, as always, from Speed Demon, uh, Butt Kicker, Elevated Outdoors, and uh, I know I'm forgetting someone. I know I'm forgetting something. Yeah, that's how speech speechless I am. 
Oh yeah, affordable SEO and marketing. And on behalf of all of our admins, shout out to our race director, Chris Lynn, and our admins of Mark Sikosi and Justin Diltz, Marty Sakala. Signing things off for tonight, we congratulate David Salter, first career win in the National Sim Racing League. Thank you all for joining us tonight, and we say so long from Iowa.